On March 11, 2011, the Great East Japan earthquake struck Tohoku. The massive earthquake and tsunami shook the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station and resulted in a nuclear accident. Today, at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, efforts to decommission the plant like none ever attempted before are well underway in order to protect the people nearby, reduce the environmental impact, and make it safe to live here once again so that citizens can return to their homes. Unless the decommissioning is a success, recovery in areas affected by the earthquake and resulting aftermath will be impossible. Safe and steady decommissioning progress is the key to a successful recovery. At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station, after the earthquake and tsunami struck, a loss of reactor core cooling capabilities caused fuel rods to overheat, leading to meltdowns. There were also several explosions, which resulted in the release of radioactive material. Melted fuel rehardened, forming nuclear fuel debris inside the reactor cores, which needs to be removed. This nuclear fuel debris is still highly radioactive, which makes the removal process potentially very dangerous. The removal process continues one step at a time, with safety as the top priority. The target completion date is somewhere between 2041 and 2051. However, in order to cool the nuclear fuel debris and keep it stable, water must be added continually. When this water comes into contact with the nuclear fuel debris, it is contaminated with radioactive material. Rainwater and groundwater can also enter the reactor buildings. Various prevention measures, such as groundwater bypasses, subdrains, facing, and landside impermeable walls have been implemented. These measures help control the production of contaminated water, but they cannot prevent it completely. Currently, the Advanced Liquid Processing System, known as ELPS, is being used to remove almost all radioactive material from such water, which is then stored in tanks. The amount of water being stored both during and post-treatment is 1.29 million tons. There are over 1,000 tanks. As long as nuclear fuel debris remains, the amount of treated water will continue to increase. In April 2021, the Japanese government decided to discharge ELPS treated water into the Pacific Ocean. This decision was necessary to make the decommissioning and further recovery possible. ELPS equipment uses adsorption and filtering to reduce almost all types of radioactive material. For example, the amount of cesium in ELPS treated water is reduced to near a billionth. However, there is one radioactive material that ELPS cannot remove. That is, tritium. However, this tritium can already be found in rainwater, ocean water, and tap water. Due to its structure, even if we ingest tritium, it is excreted just like water is and does not accumulate in the body. Furthermore, the combined 1.29 million tons of water currently being held in tanks only contains a meager 15 grams of tritium. 
water-containing tritium is diluted more than 100 times with ocean water to reduce levels to well below regulatory limits before being discharged. The discharge of tritium within regulatory limits into the ocean occurs at many other nuclear power stations around the world. The International Atomic Energy Agency has conducted rigorous reviews on decommissioning with the assistance of experts from around the world. The IAEA stated the discharge into the ocean to be technically feasible and in line with international practice. Throughout the discharge process, the IAEA will continue to provide support in monitoring the impact on the oceans and environment and results will be released publicly. Laboratories in France, Germany, the Republic of Korea and other countries have been comparing the results of monitoring and there have also been ongoing reviews of the safety of ELPS treated water. Careful observation from the international community ensures that the discharge will be carried out safely. Furthermore, regular monitoring has been conducted before and after the start of the discharge to verify its impact on the radioactive substance concentrations in the ocean and marine life. Measurements and analyses of radioactive substance concentrations in seawater and fish are conducted not only by TEPCO, but also by the national government and Fukushima Prefecture, with the results being publicly available on the web. The decommissioning and discharge of treated water into the ocean rely on far more than ELPS technology alone. The dangerous and complex process of removing nuclear fuel debris remotely using robotic technologies is just one example of the many cutting-edge technologies being used. Behind the decommissioning process and these unprecedented efforts are the people who rise to the challenge, driven by passion and a sense of mission with the support of Japan's cutting-edge technologies. In the areas affected by the Great East Japan earthquake, people should be able to enjoy life again. In order to make this a reality, the steadfast journey of recovery continues.